How's it going, people? Well, I'm still getting ready for my camping trip. And, um, just got back from the store. Bought some goodies. And I wasn't expecting someone to give me a free gift. But someone did. But first. That's right, somebody gave me something in the parking lot. And now I'm going to share it with you folks. Because it might be important. Haven't read it yet. <sighs> oh, that was nice. Yep. There's this gal part out in the parking lot at the supermarket. Dressed up for church. Kind of cute. And yeah, she stopped me at my car and and I'm loading my stuff, so she waited. And someone else came up, so she abandoned me and went to that other person. And I, I heard her saying, I I really hope you read this and because it's just full of valuable uh, insight. And he said, Oh well, thank you. So I and then she handed me this. And I said, I promise to read it. And that's a promise I'm going to fulfill right now. And it's from our, my pals at the Fellowship Track League. They're busy these days. Wow. So eternal life is a free gift. You don't have to do anything for it then. It's free. No strings attached, right? Let's find out if there's any strings attached. Oh. The Lord Jesus Christ paid the full price for the salvation of your soul. He gave himself for our sins. Galatians 1, uh, 1, 4, 8. Just the first part of the verse. Uh, Jesus, the Son of God, loved me and gave himself for me and that's uh, Galatians 2 20 B this time they like the other half of this verse so. anyway. now because of his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us There remains no price for us to pay. Hebrews 9.12b The latter half. We are justified freely by His grace. That's Romans 3.24a Wow, we haven't had a full verse yet, have we? It is finished, John 1930b, and those are supposedly, according to John, like the very, among the last words Jesus said, and I believe there are other things ever said in other ones, like, you know, from the Psalms, why have you forsaken me, and, you know, hey, forgive them. <sighs> yeah, they just can't really completely agree. They... Alright. Doing good works cannot save you, so stop doing good works. They're not doing you any good. Ah, I'm just kidding. No, keep doing good works because there shouldn't be an ulterior motive for wanting to do good, except you, you can't change the world, you can only influence it as much as one person can. Some do a better job than others, don't do anything. Now, so doing good works can't save you. Salvation is not of works. Lest any man should boast, and we love this verse, don't we? Ephesians. 2-9. Hey, looks like the whole verse. 
I don't know if I was ready. I don't know if I could handle the whole verse. <laughs> God hath saved us from himself. <laughs> yeah, there's the good God, the bad God, you know? <laughs> you want to be on his good side. <laughs> called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, oh no, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. He gave it to you guys way back then? I mean, even if you think the world's less than 10,000 years old, that still sounds ridiculous. <laughs> and when you think about it being like, oh, like four and a half billion. <sighs> yeah, billion. And we're probably wrong, it's probably more. <laughs> Who knows? Not a scientist. <sighs> and I'm not pontificating either. Just trying to help. Alright. Oh, the Bible. God's Word. Says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10. Gee, I thought that was Paul writing that. And actually, there's some dispute of whether it's Paul. It's like, wait a minute, you're writing this to Romans and yet you're going there in chains? And you're sassing them? But then again, he's a Roman citizen, so go figure. But I don't think God said that. I think it was whoever was posing as Paul. <sighs> For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans. 3, 23, the whole enchilada. Sin is the sin is the problem. Damn it. Ah, thanks for reminding me. Ah. And even belonging to a church will not take it away. Jesus Christ himself said, Verily, verily, he said it twice because he meant it so much that saying it once wasn't enough. It was very, very uh, hmm. now I find my spot. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Jesus Christ himself said, Nope, I'm reading again. Uh, verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Because it's magic. You've know? got to look through your Bible glasses. Yeah, look through your biblical glasses. I got one for, for eclipses. For solar eclipses. <laughs> Don't ask me where I got it, or I'll tell you, the dispensary. <laughs> uh, that was thoughtful. They didn't want me to burn my retina. Might make my eyes red. Um, yeah, and that was John 3, 3b. As the Bible says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Seems to be saying something different there. We're talking about the Mosaic law, Levitical law, all of a sudden. Anyway, that's Romans 3, 29, and we don't even know for sure who wrote that. I think I'll put a link below to a free audiobook. Uh, for by grace are ye saved through faith? 
and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Ephesians 2.8 You cannot take your chances. They said right there. Right above the, under the thumb. Yeah, right above the thumb. You can't take your chances. Pascal's wager is even risky. Because what if it's a different God? People have believed in lots of gods. And now they're atheists to most, most of them. <laughs> yeah, those are myths. Yeah. People were serious about that shit back in the day. Just like now. Actually, probably more so then. <sighs> the Bible says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Hebrews 9, 27. They could cut and paste these verses uh, onto each track. It seems like they do, and they just sort of change the mumbo-jumbo, you know, the apologetics that surround it. I love your tracks, guys. Don't get me wrong. Uh, <laughs> you really don't know for sure. How much time is left of your life? Yeah, I wasn't thinking about it until you reminded me. Damn it. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor. Yeah, fart in the wind. That appeareth for a little time. And then vanish away, James 4.14. And that's about it. Ain't that a shame? <sighs> you cannot save yourself. Well, sometimes you can. Depends on what you're talking about. <laughs> I've saved myself from a lot of things. Um, the Bible says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Galatians 2.16a. It also says, we are all as an unclean thing. That's Isaiah, right? Yeah, <laughs> I knew it. And all our righteousness says are as filthy rags. My grandfather loved that one. He used to preach from the pulpit. Isaiah 63, 6a. And I'll give him that. Isaiah was a little long-winded. No wonder Joseph Smith loved him so much. I mean, God, there must be like a third of Isaiah put in the Book of Mormon. And I don't know, I read it on video and put it on YouTube. <sighs> Salvation is free to all. Well, it ought to be. I mean, if I push somebody out of the way of a bus and they lived, they don't owe me anything except maybe thank you if they feel like it. The fact is, I mean, I think anyone should do a thing like that. So, yeah, if I save your ass, don't you don't have to break me off or anything. I'm good. <laughs> the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10.13 The whole thing. The Bible says, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 1 Timothy 1.15b For Christ also hath once suffered for sins. The just for the unjust. Wait, the just for the unjust. 
that he might bring us to God. Sounds so Republican, so, you know, conservative. <laughs> oh, anyway, that whole bit was, that whole bit was from uh, 1 Peter 3.18a, although we're not sure Peter wrote it. But some of it sounds like maybe my idea of Peter. Yeah. <laughs> he sounds like a prick. <laughs> All right. Anyway, yeah. Uh, if you do not get saved... Oh, this is the part that interests me. I like how they trail off, too. Oh, it's just unthinkable. The Bible says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever scary. And they have no rest, day nor night, so the sun's going to come up and go down in hell. Uh, sorry, I lost my place. Uh, yeah. No rest, day nor night. Revelation 1411a. <laughs> you just have to keep track of every time the sun comes up in hell. You know, when chalk it off somewhere. <laughs> and that's the hell of it. <laughs> Alright. For the wages of sin is death. That's Romans 623a. This death is more than just physical death. It's worse than that. Huh? <laughs> it is an eternal burning. I think. I mean, you can get used to anything, I imagine. So they've got to like switch it up so that you don't adapt, right? That means somebody is actively going. I'm just doing God's work here, man. He made this place. <laughs> For all you washouts, and that's a lot of you. Many shall be called, but few will be chosen. And I don't remember the verse, but it ain't in here. Yeah, they wouldn't say that in a tract, would they? The Bible says, But the fearful, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, Fearful? That's the faithful. <laughs> they have a crutch, so they can be fearless if they choose to be, but only if they have that crutch in place. And some of them, I'm glad they're Christians, because I heard they'd become like axe murderers or, sh you know, run through a shopping mall with a chainsaw if, they w if Jesus wasn't real. And it was all like a vapor. Sorry, running long. Uh, we'll get through this. Uh, abominable and murderers and whoremongers. All right, not, but not lately. Uh, and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. Yeah, that's everybody. <laughs> Shall I have their part? in the lake which burneth <coughs> uh, with fire and brimstone because it needs a fuel to keep going so it's burning the brimstone which is sulfur uh, yeah hell's going to smell like one big fart and the flames will be nice and blue which is the Second death. Revelation 21 8. So the sun goes up and down in hell, and this hell starting to not make much sense. Uh, how can you be saved? Because you got to be scared by now, right? Man, lake of fire forever? Ow! <laughs> Ow! Ow! 
picks up a bazillion times more and just goes on and on. It might even get boring, who knows. Um, how can you be saved from a... Uh... The Bible calls for repentance towards God or an earthly representative who will take your money gladly <sighs> and might even watch your kids while you're at work. Uh, anyway, uh, repentance towards God, that would be Acts 20, 21b, so it's somewhere that little fragment fits in. Repentance is a change of heart which causes you to turn towards God and away from your present life, which you could later on talk about, like, oh, it was so horrible. I was a porn star millionaire. It sucked. I hated it. It was so good. This is so much better. I'm just fucked up. Sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry. I just heard those, you know, you know, come to Jesus calls, you know. I've heard people just get up and tell their stories and should I should share a few that I remember hearing about. Some of them were really pathetic in hindsight. <sighs> but everybody liked them. Right. Yeah, that comes from your present way of life. Except the Bible facts. Facts? The Bible? Factual? <laughs> Uh, that you are guilty as a sinner before him. And that's a fact. Because they just said that. And he wouldn't write it down. He wouldn't document it if it wasn't true. So, you know, when you die, you'll find out they were, they were right. Uh, And you are unable to deliver yourself from the punishment of hell, which is due you because of your sin, which sometimes is just being born. The Bible also calls for faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 20, 21b. Faith is putting complete trust in Jesus Christ as your only means of clearing your guilt and delivering your soul. Sounds so good if you're guilty of something. <sighs> From punishment of hell. So you're guilty and you want to escape punishment and so pucker up. Bible says, but we're only getting the latter half part of it, belief on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And that's Acts 1631a. If you will receive Jesus Christ into your heart by trusting him to save your soul, and shake the etch a sketch. <laughs> it's gone. Draw a new picture. <laughs> uh, you will become a son of God and spend eternity, eternity, in heaven. And it's a free gift. See, I'm I'm helping out in my own way. All right. Oh, yeah. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to be sons of God, to believe, even to believe on his name. John 1.12. God promises he will save you if you will trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. That 
If thou could, shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead like a zombie, <laughs> but better, uh, a lot better. Uh, <laughs> He doesn't want to eat your brains. He just doesn't want you using yours. I mean, you can use it, you know, for lots of things, just not in looking at this too closely. Not in asking questions, real questions. It's like looking for an eclipse. <sighs> Please accept the free gift of eternal life God is offering you. Please. They're trying so hard, these guys. Look, they even wrapped it. They put a bow on it. Yeah, it's a free gift. Hey, the Unabomber sent a few free gifts, didn't he? But they were pretty expensive, weren't they? If you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please pray with all your heart. Another sample prayer. The bit about the Unabomber is, what I'm just saying is down the road, you pay for shit. Him, it's a package exploding in your face. This shit, it's tithing, it's wasting time listening to mumbo jumbo and hocus pocus from a book of desert fables that have nothing to do with today. Nothing except they're cool metaphors, that's about it. Like Greek mythology. Well, let's read that sample prayer and get this over with. God damn, I can't believe I'm thinking this long. Dear God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Not really. I mean, being an atheist, I'm a sinner. I drank a beer. Uh, a couple other things I forgot. But not much. <laughs> I'm not much of a sinner. Uh, I am sorry for my sins. Actually, I enjoyed a lot of mine. Uh, and now, trust the Lord Jesus Christ to save me. I now take him as my Lord and Savior and ask for eternal life that he paid for with his own blood. What a guilt trip. Guy dies 2,000 years ago. He says, hey, this one's for all of you. <laughs> I don't get it. <sighs> and I'm, that's why I'm going to get it, I guess. But if you have decided to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, after, after reading this tract... Please write and let us, let us know so we can put you on our mailing list. And <laughs> and that's a fellowship track league. And look, we got a section where you can sign away on a dotted line there. I hope you learned something. It sounds like the same old dribble to me. Um, but I just got this today. It's Sunday. In the parking lot. And she was kind of cute, so I took it. And I promised her I was going to read it. And I I think I have the evidence to prove that I did. I hope you'll learn something. And you'll let me know what that is. Peace. The fuck. Out. Have a wonderful... Whatever the fuck it is that you're having. And I mean that in a non-denominal... Non-denominational... You know what I mean non-denominational way. <laughs>